everybody. So I wanted to do a video today, and I'm actually, this is going to be kind of a two-part video thing, and I wanted to show some of the places that we check routinely whenever we're looking for EPM points on a horse. Now, I'm going to start out and kind of preface this video with saying this is not a replacement for veterinary work. If you suspect your horse has EPM, go visit with your vet. I mean, that's going to be the first thing we... We definitely don't want this to present like a substitute for veterinary care, but I also want to kind of talk about some of the things that as therapists that we look for when we're looking at these EPM horses. Because I hear a lot of things on Facebook where people say, oh, you can't, you know, you can't tell an EPM horse by looking at a picture, and sometimes you can't. And this is why I picked this horse here. Um, this is actually one of my personal horses. Um, She's the, she's the whole sister to a horse that I'm fixing to show you that has an SI issue. And like this mare, uh, kind of got set on the back burner. To be honest, she's not patterned. Um, she hasn't been ridden in a couple of years since I've had all of my health stuff. And so she's kind of that, what I call sneaky EPM, that, you know, there's no poor performance here because we don't have performance. Um, you know, I'm not noticing any difference when I saddle her because, again, she hasn't been saddled in quite a while. So, um, one of the things that, like, my grandma picked up on and my husband when they were feeding, they said, you know, she just kind of seems off, she's lethargic, she wants to kind of stand off by herself, like, she's just not feeling herself. And so, I'm going to show kind of the points that we check first, and we're going to see how reactive she is on them. So, the series of points that we use, um... This is a formula that my vet, Sam Crosby, has kind of showed me. And again, like I said, this is open to interpretation because these points can also mean other things as well. This is just kind of one of the guidelines that we go by of me deciding like, oh, do I need to haul her and have him look at her to kind of confirm my suspicions. So the first point, all these points are marked in pink, the points that we are actually looking for. So it's gonna be this point up here, this point here, the point underneath the belly, and then the point over the hip. And so you go up and we do everything in threes because, you know, you may, they, at first they may be sensitive just trying to see what you're doing. But, you know, this mare, she's not the worst reactive horse I've seen, but she doesn't improve any. She actually gets a little, a little worse every single time I go over this point. And I'm not using a lot of pressure. Um, then also I go to this point. Now this point can also be a foot point. Um, also as well as this could be simply a pole injury. This can be a foot point as well. Um, now, I, you know, because I know her and she's my horse, I know that her feet are balanced, everything is balanced with her, so she really has no reason to present a hoof point. Um, you know, and she's not terribly reactive there, but she's, she's pretty reactive. And, you know, it doesn't, doesn't go away the more I do it. She actually gets more agitated the more I go over that point. And then we kind of go back to the hip area going underneath. This can also be an ulcer point. Um, but, again, she has no reason to have ulcers because she's not a performance horse. She's not being hauled. She's not under stress. She's a little bit reactive there. Um, one of the things I'm watching there is this band of muscle. This point seems to feed up into this band of muscle here. Now that also occurs too when you're just doing a belly lift. So you've kind of got to interpret the points and what you see and be able to kind of rule out other factors as well. And now I go back to this big hip point and she's super reactive there and doesn't, doesn't get any better. It proceeds to get worse the more I go over this point. Um, and if I keep aggravating that, she's gonna get to the point of wanting to kick at me. So, the other, this is kind of, this is where I'm going to make, you know, my thought process of thinking, you know, it's probably not going to hurt to run around of treatment through her. But more importantly, the other things that we look for, when we get her, let me get her standing balanced here again. The other, the other things I've been watching for is she stands and she's kind of wanted to stand with a foot out. She's not stood real balanced any of the time that she's been standing here. So to me, that's kind of something that I think about as well. Um, and if you'll bring the camera a little closer for me. Another thing that I see a lot on EPM horses, if you look at how full this mare is through her jaw, how, and she's, she's sore on this. Um, again, she's not a mare that's been hauled. 
So she's sore all through her pole, all up to her ear. Um, I can actually see the swelling here and in this throat latch. Um, and that's one of the things that we see how that inflammation with EPM presents because she's not running a fever. She's obviously not sick. You know, again, she's not been hauled anywhere to have picked up anything. This is just stuff that's going on with her. And I mean, if you kind of look at her, she's got a little bit of a dull look to her. Um, she's a little bit lethargic. Um, also, where I put these other marks, it may be hard to see in this video, but you can see places of atrophy here. Um, you can see kind of the, the dents in this muscle tissue here, and it's a little hard because, again, it's wintertime and she's furry. But this is one of the things, you know, as a massage therapist, I'm looking for. Um, you know, you start to see this definition, this muscle definition change here, and as I turn her head, you see this atrophy and how this is all dented through here. And so that's just the start of that EPM starting to whittle away at that muscle. Um, also, if you look from this angle, if you'll bring the camera right over here, if you look down her back, I'm actually gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna grab the camera and give you, give you kind of my eye view here. If you look down her back right here, this area is starting to kind of sink in and starting to kind of create a little bit of a dip. See how she's starting to lose this top line right through here? Also, the crevice of her back, the more I've went over these points, the crevice of her back is starting to get deeper simply because she's agitated. Now, when I go back to the stomach point, see how much that pops that muscle up and kind of changes the way that that looks? You actually start to see that dip in a little bit more. Same way when I go back to this hip point. Let me back up so this will get in focus. Same thing when I go back to this hip point, you see that muscle kind of come up right here and actually want to start to spasm, which she does not want to hold this stretch at all. Um, and you see her, um, actually right here, I think maybe you can see that muscle spasming if I can get this to focus. But she's, yeah, there you, there you can actually see this muscle popped up right there and you can see how much this gets indented in front of it. And so to back up, I'll hand the camera back to you, Grandma. Um, to back up, you can see how I'm holding, you can see how I'm holding the stretch. And so here's the, here's the problematic area that's going to stay sore. This has a little bit of an indention or, you know, is, is dropped. And then because she doesn't have balance, she picks her tail up and moves her tail to the side. If you'll step around right behind her. She's, got, she's picking up and moving her tail to the side to try to help balance this muscle tissue. And you try to move her tail over, that hurts. And you can actually see, if you look up over her flank, Grandma, you can actually see that spasm worse as I hold her tail to the side. You can see this start to atrophy right here. And so, you know, this is a lot of the thing that we look for on these horses. And, you know, this mare's pretty broke, pretty easy to handle, and that's part of the reason we're able to use her for this exercise. But also, marked in the green here, are other areas of atrophy that we start to see. And see how, notice how she gets more sore the more I mess with her. Um, that also lets me know just simply doing a massage on this mare is not going to improve her because the more I've stimulated these points, the worse she's gotten. And let me see if I can get her to stand square. And then bringing this, bringing this camera angle back up. I'm going to jump back up here. Um, look at the, she's standing, let me see if I can get her a little more square. There we go. Well, now she doesn't want to stand square because everything's bothering her slightly. <laughs> okay, that's reason, reasonably square. And so you look at how her hips are, you see how she's starting to overbuild right here. And this is unbalanced on this right side. And you can see the difference in her hips, which goes along with the atrophy that you see. Like, you know, she's nice and rounded and full on this side, but then you get over to this side and you see that little bit of atrophy through there. And so, you know, that's one of the things that we look for as well. 
So this mare is going to have a bit of an abnormal gait on a lunge line just simply because her body's not going to be able to use itself the way that it should. Um, so, it, you know, in my opinion on this horse, she would definitely be one that would be worth treating for EPM. Um, and again, like I said, we don't do this as a substitute for any type of vet work. This is just one of the things that we look at ourselves. And I'm going to have you hand this back to you. And I'm going to do one more stretch with her, which is asking her to, you probably from back there a little bit. Um, see, I'm going to ask her, she's probably not going to be able to hold this stretch and see how she has to extend that leg out behind her. Um, you know, the horses that you've watched me do these hip stretches and things with, um, to me, this is just a telltale sign. Like she's, she's trying to completely evade the stretch and trying to struggle to get away from the stretch versus being able to hold that stretch. So that right there kind of tells me there's some all over muscle weakness going on with her. Um, some horses will bow up, they will try to get away from the stretch when they can't do that, they'll bow up and they'll kick. Um, but in her case, she's just trying to do anything she can do to nicely get away from the pressure. And so that's kind of kind of one of the things that we look at as far as EPM and trying to figure out what we've got going on from a muscle structure. And so in the next video, I'm going to show a horse that's just a true SI injury horse. Um, and I'll show one more thing on this mare. Uh, now she does not have to, the real like textbook toe grab or rubbing her toes off like a lot of them. Some of them you see will be completely squared off. Now that being said, she is wanting to stand with her toes out instead of straight. Um, you know, she, she is wanting to toe out a little bit instead of standing balanced. Uh, you know, that's obviously a little less than the ideal when she's standing with that toe angle the way that she is. But you kind of see a lot of horses typically that have more, um, that will drag their toes off worse than what she is. Uh, so that's always a thing that we look for as well of how they stand with their feet as well as how their toes look naturally. Hey everybody. Okay, so I'm back with a second horse here that's actually a full sister to the first horse that you saw. And I'm going to go through a little bit of kind of how we detect an SI issue versus just your typical EPM. Now again, this is not us diagnosing, like definitely consult your vet. These are just some of the things that we look for as massage therapists and we look for having the horses in the barn. Now I get to cheat a little bit because both of these horses I've raised. So I know all of the problems that they've had leading up to this. Um, I know them pretty well, just like you would know your horses in your own barn. So I give you these videos to basically kind of give you some tools to use at home to try to kind of figure out when your horse isn't acting right or, you know, if, if you're training it that you're doing is working, just to kind of get you to start noticing changes in your own horse. So this mare right here, I have drawn, the spot that I've drawn on her is representing the psoas muscle in the horse. Um, and it's pretty anatomically correct, but I'm definitely not gonna like, you know, take a side gig of like painting horses or anything like the professionals do. I also have drawn the psoas muscle on myself as well. Um, so in, in both areas, they go through the lumbar, or the origin of it's in the lumbar, and then on us, it attaches down to the base of the hip into the pubic region. On the horse, it actually just attaches into the bone and ties in right through here. And so one of the things that we see a lot with psoas soreness in horses is a lot of times, you know, it can be caused by unbalanced riding. Um, the psoas helps to stabilize the spine. Um, in humans, it's what keeps us upright. Um, without your psoas, you don't have a spine, like you would be bent over all the time. Um, to palpate it in a person, you palpate from the front. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky on horses because it sets really, really deep and it's covered by other muscles. So the, it has all these muscle groups over the top of it, but this is the muscle that lifts your leg and pulls it forward. So with horses that have SI issues, that have psoas muscle issues, 
they have a tendency to want to drag their toes off just like an EPM horse, but it's not EPM. Another thing that complicates, since I brought up that this is a mare, um, your ovary points can be right through here too. So sometimes this is where it plays in taking your horse to the vet because you've got to be able to decipher, am I having a muscle issue? Am I having a joint issue? Am I having you know, EPM or some type of neurologic issue? Um, you know, is it ovaries? There, there's kind of a lot, that the waters get a little bit muddy in this type of area because there's a lot of parts that have to work really, really well together to have a fully functioning horse. Um, but again, we're gonna go back to like checking our EPM points on her. So I'm gonna go up to this point where little sister was really, really sore and she was trying to move away from me. And you know, she's really not reactive here. Now to give you a little bit of history on this mare, she had EPM really, really bad as a three-year-old. And I believe the EPM is what started her SI issue that we're gonna get into talking about in just a little bit. So this mare always has a little bit of atrophy here. She's always just a little bit sore to palpate this area. But in knowing her, if she was really, really needing treated, her first indicator, she gets extremely, extremely head shy. And you know, she's not, she's pretty low key. This is not really bothering her that much. It's maybe an annoyance to her at most. And then going down here to this foot that we, or this point that we talked about also being a foot point. You know, she's really not reactive there at all either. Um, she also doesn't have, now she has some atrophy scarring, which you will always be able to see. Um, and that's just from the severity, that's just from the severity of the EPM that she had as a three-year-old. So she's always a little bit hollow in her neck, but this is kind of her normal. Um, going back to this stomach point here, you know, she's not reactive at all. Uh, now, you know, if I ask her, because, because I stretch my horses a lot, now if I ask her to do a belly lift, she's going to pick up and do a nice belly lift for me. Um, but that's part of just her being trained and her being attuned to me doing this type of thing to her. And then going back here on this hip point, you know, there's a little bit of reactivity there, but nothing like the sister that we saw. Now, if I step up and I ask her to engage the psoas muscle, look at how much, you'll have to come a little bit closer. Look at how much change you get through her there and how much this muscle gets raised. And you start to see this atrophy right here. She's trying to get away from me. And actually, when you look at it from this angle right here, you're going to start to see her spasm up in this back area. So when I activate this point, look at, look at the spasm that happens right through here. And, sorry, my phone's a little out of focus. But that's, that's one of the things that I watch for on the SI issues. Now, you know, another thing when talking about riding, where, where do you sit? Right here in this area of soreness. And so, you know, this is definitely going to be a problem whenever she goes to engage this muscle. Um, and also you can kind of see she's got a little bit of atrophy there. Of course, she has not been ridden either. Um, she's been off since April, so she doesn't have any degree of fitness. Uh, that's another thing too, like she looks fit. She's really not a horse that bellies down. She really doesn't get fat. But, you know, right now she's, she's not fit. And so, you know, you go through this point right here. And like when I look at her, I can tell there's a little bit of a dip right here. And that's just how she's using herself because she's a little bit sore. Now, this green spot right here is atrophy that always stays here with her. This is left over. You can palpate it. You can feel the dip here. Um, she has a little bit of a nodule kind of right over that SI. This has always been here ever since she's had EPM. I can't get rid of it. I can't laser it out. I can't stretch it out. Like this, this is just a little bit of a piece of tissue that's died. Um, and if you'll come around and look at her from the, from the tail region here, we'll scoot her over so we don't have the light in our way. And, you know, when you look at her from the posterior or the back, you can tell that this side is a little more depressed. Um, you know, you step back even a little bit more 
and you see the difference in her muscle tissue. Um, you see that that right side, she's definitely been compensating for because, and see she wants to shift her weight, now she's, now she's standing level. But you can see how this muscle tissue right through here has changed, and it's basically because of how she's using herself. Now we go back and do just like checking over these SI points, and you get a pretty big reaction right there over the SI. Now, I can ask her to, uh, you may have to step back where they can see her. Um, when I go to do like her stretches, she will hold this stretch pretty well just because she's trained. But when you look at her right from behind, and I'll do this stretch again in a second, and what I want you to watch is this right side, she leaves this drop. She doesn't pull up and come into the stretch. So she's trained enough that she's not going to kick me, she's not going to step away from me, but she's also not doing a proper stretch. So she's not going to use this stretch to align her spine because that psoas is too contracted. So when I go at it again, watch her feet and legs as well. See how she she's flattening her pelvis, which I want her to do, but she has to cock this leg and stand to the side because she can't hold that stretch. Um, you know, we see that a lot with people that have psoas issues. They're the type of people that you see, they stand to the side and they stand with their leg bent a lot. And part of what that is, is when that psoas contracts, it's pulling your middle down to your groin area. And so it makes it hard to have posture. It makes it hard to stand up. And when you do stand up, you have a tendency to want to relax that hip so you, you stand with it out. Um, so like this mare, like see, she still has not even dropped her hip to the, her heel to the ground. Um, so she's kind of that typical mare. And like you come back over here, Grandma. And as I've done these stretches, this band of tissue has gotten tighter and it's changed a little bit. And so you can see she's starting to get sore through there. And that's just from the few simple stretches that I've done with her. And so like... That's one of the things that we've got to try to kind of work and get loosened up on her. Now, in her case, she's going to be one that's, you know, that's a pretty easy trip to the vet of we're going to inject SIs and then we're going to do a lot of backing. We're going to do a lot of that same stretch right there because the way this is pulling and when this contracts, it wants to pull everything together and so you get that pelvis that's tipped anteriorly. We see it the same way in people. You can't use your glutes, you can't engage your glutes and stand up and have good posture because that's contracting so hard, your body's gonna naturally wanna go back to this, this stance right here or, or this stance of standing out away. So, um, you know, like if you were to ride this horse, she might cross fire. She's not gonna be able to go up and down hills very well. Um, you know, she's, probably not going to want to set for a barrel turn. She's probably going to want to get on past that barrel and then try to kind of be on the back side of it and come back out of it. She, she's going to have some poor performance issues. Of course, in her case, she's not in shape well enough for me to be worried about the performance issues right now. So, you know, this is one of those things where because this is a chronic problem, injections are not going to be a fix, but what the injections are going to do is they're going to reduce this inflammation here in this area that way we can let this muscle relax and then through exercises and stretching and fitting, then I'm going to be able to uh, get her, get all this relaxed where she can go back to performing. Um, I had several people that tagged me in an article this morning that talked about long trotting on horses with SI issues. And she's one that I cannot do a lot of long trotting with. Because, because of this issue here and because of her having the EPM so bad and because of having some of this atrophy that never goes away, she is just not a horse that can hold her frame very well while long trotting long distances. And she never has been able to. So she's one that I do a lot of loping. I do a lot of cardio. Um, obviously, she goes in the aqua tread a lot. And so... Uh, she's definitely not the textbook of like, yeah, you're going to long trot her a lot for fitness because the fitter she gets, the tighter this muscle gets, the more sore she gets, and so she starts using herself improperly, 
and then you're going to end up going to the chiropractor all the time, and one problem becomes a whole other set of problems. But if you want to come over and look at her feet, Grandma, um, like she's, she's that kind of textbook where we talked about her dragging her toes off. Um, you, look, you look at her hind feet, and she squares that toe off pretty well on her own. And the reason of that being is she just doesn't have that mobility, and she does it on both of them. Um, she just does not have that mobility in the hind end, especially when I don't have her fit to be able to keep, um, to keep that mobility in that SI to be able to pick her feet up. So she gets lazy and she drags them. Now, on the flip side of that, what we see in people is usually that psoas will kind of wrap its way around and cause lower back problems, and you tend to see a person drag the heel of their shoe off. Um, so there's just kind of a little bit of a difference in your horse and your rider. And one of the things, like we have a video that we want to do a little bit later on, you know, take a person like me who's had, I've actually had a psoas surgery done. They actually had to, within my hip process, go in and they cut that psoas off the bone and lengthened it a bit and re it back together. Um, which I thought might keep me from having to have my hip replaced, but I still had to have the hip replaced. Um, but, you know, you take somebody like me that I have trouble engaging my glutes and having good posture as well. And so I have more of a kind of a humped over riding stance, which puts more weight on the front of the horse, gets her on her front end. And now we've kind of got the perfect storm where both of us stay sore. Um, and I'll be honest, I'm not for sure to some degree that my hip issues didn't cause some of the SI issues in this mare because my right hip is the worst and her right SI is the worst. So, you know, sometimes it's about creating the balance with the horse and the rider to be able to have a fully functioning set of athletes that are able to do an event. So, again, if you've got questions, let us know and we'll try to help the best that we can. Um, again, not a substitute for going to your vet, not, not a way to self-diagnose at home, just trying to teach everybody how to be aware of what your horse is going through, how to be aware of maybe how to condition the problem horse that has chronic injuries, and just how to have a little better understanding of what your horse is going through when these problems arise. So, happy trails, y'all.